This is the History of Show. I'm Robert. And I'm Emma. And today we will be talking about the history of ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. I'm super excited. Who doesn't love ice cream? Well, first I have to plug our YouTube channel. We yes. have a YouTube channel by the same name titled The History Of. The History Of. There's no dot 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 in the name of mm -hmm. the YouTube channel, uh, but please check that out. It hasn't been getting the same same popularity as our regular podcast has. So please check that out. So same thing, just different platform. Mm -hmm. uh, but first, uh, well, yeah, so we have uh, today's episode, as we just said, is about ice cream. And before we get into the show, we have the egg carton count. And today's egg carton count is... It's uh, 11. I'm, yeah, we relocated the, the nine egg cartons that we had before. And... Uh, Excuse me. And uh, the the two that were on the shelf before, I am now using... They're actually under my laptop right now uh, for better ventilation so the fan doesn't work as hard so we don't have a hum in the background. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool setup. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But trying to, trying to get as many egg cartons in here as possible. Yeah. We chose to have this episode today because tomorrow, Sunday, July 19th, is... National Ice Cream Day! Now let me do, I will note, I am going full send on this. I have my milkshake with me, so I am in gear yeah, for this. Yeah, she actually has a milkshake right now, like as we're recording this. It's pretty uh, great. But let's start off this uh, ice cream episode with some quirky trivia about ice cream. Uh, so here's, here's uh, fact number one. 12 gallons of milk go into one gallon of ice cream. It makes me wonder why... Ice cream is not more expensive than it is. I like, know, right? Why is an ice cream twelve times more expensive than milk? You actually—that's that's a very valid point. I'm probably looking at this from a very one-dimensional point of view, but someone please explain this to me. Yes, please. Um, okay, number two, the average American eats forty-eight pints of ice cream each year. Yep, I can attest to that. That for is sure. Im that is impressive. Okay, number three. The world record for the largest ice cream sundae is 24 tons. That That is not okay. That is so much ice cream. 24 tons. That's... It was set in 1988 in Edmonton, Alberta in Canada. I guess it's easier to, to keep it cold there. I guess. It's a lot. A lot of ice That's cream. crazy. Okay. Number four. Over the course of a cow's life, uh, she can produce enough milk for 9,000 gallons of ice cream. Do the math. I mean, I guess if you use 12 gallons of milk and then 9,000 gallons of ice cream, that's, what, 108,000 gallons of milk? Yeah, that's on average. That's a lot of milk. That's... Kudos to the cows, man. I know. They sacrifice everything. Well, I guess they don't <laughs> They don't really have a choice. <laughs> oh, okay. Human okay. rights is another topic. Not, I mean, animal rights. Animal rights. Animal rights. <laughs> All of that's an important topic. Okay. Continuing. Last fact. Um, the world record for the largest ice cream cake... 12,096 pounds. I wouldn't mind having that for my birthday. Okay, my birthday, you should totally get me a huge ice cream cake. 12,096 pounds? Maybe 12,097 just to You would extra. need like hundreds of people to eat that. We can, like, we can make it work. Thousands of people. Like that would be, yeah, if like 12,096 people, that'd be a pound of ice cream per person. If this does happen, I will set up a thing to invite the Think listeners about that. of our podcast if that's, you, you want to come. Like, that many people that's still a lot of ice cream per person okay but uh yeah so let's start talking about the history of the dessert like many other topics ice cream gets less and less recognizable as ice cream the further back you take it in history for example there are accounts in the old testament uh of the bible telling that king solomon drank milk that's not even close to ice cream there are people who try to connect this to ice cream but this is this is not ice cream uh, this is just milk. And by the way, uh, that can be found, a uh, reference to that can be found in Song of Solomon 5.1. Now, the first known person in history to eat anything, even remotely, like ice cream was Alexander the Great. He is said to have eaten some of the first snow cones, which were flavored with nectar and honey. That sounds pretty good to me. So that's in the 300s BC, which is getting pretty far back there so yeah if we were doing the history of the snow cone we would be done right there but um another historical figure who also ate snow cones was roman emperor nero 
However, he flavored his shaved ice a little bit differently with uh, fruit juices. But pretty bad guy in general, though. Yeah. Other than the snow cones, don't don't be like Nero. <laughs> Even Marco Polo learned a sorbet recipe while in the Far East. But that's still not ice cream. Uh, the first speculated frozen dairy dessert was consumed by Charles I of uh, England in the 1600s. The dish was called cream ice, which is pretty suggestive that it was a dairy product. And over in France, there was uh, ice cream was not introduced to the public until 1660. And there's a place in Paris, Paris called Café Procope that served some of the first ice cream in France. That place, Café Procope, was in fact the first cafe in France. Wow. And uh, their ice cream recipe strangely included eggs. I guess it was more more of a custard than what we would recognize today as ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, ice cream was brought over to America, and we love it here. <laughs> you get so excited. I with love this. ice cream. President uh, Thomas Jefferson had a personal recipe for vanilla ice cream, and he even included a recipe for cookies to accompanied the ice cream on the back of the paper on which he wrote the recipe. President George Washington spent around $200 on ice cream in the summer of 1790. As you can probably tell at this point in time, ice cream was still an expensive delicacy. Yeah, and however, the the frozen dirt, frozen dirt, <laughs> the frozen dessert uh, we all know and love was gradually popularized through the 19th century with various developments in technology like insulated ice houses and the process of homogenization and for those people who don't know which i know a lot of people are probably asking this question right now is what is homogenization it's um if you've heard in science class homogeneous it's uh you know machines in a factory that take the uh the cream and the milk and shake up the milk vigorously so it's all one uniform liquid to make the beautiful ice cream we all know and love oh yes in the 20th century, ice cream was served as an emotional food for both stress and for celebration. For example, the Rocky Road flavor was created in response to the Great Depression and symbolized the, quote, Rocky times. Uh, and during World War II, the U.S. stood alone in serving its troops ice cream to boost morale and boop, boop. give them a few extra calories uh, for their soldiers. There are even stories of soldiers who made ice cream in the air on a mission in a B-17. That's legit. Soldiers are crazy. They use the vibration of the engines to churn the ice cream. After the end of World War II, the military ration on dairy products was lifted and Americans ate a lot of ice cream in 1946 to celebrate the victory. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's the short history of ice cream. Uh, everything after that, you know, nothing really changed much after that. Uh, but next we get into the ice cream cone. Ice cream's incredible edible handheld container. Oh, yes. Now, the more famous explanation is that they were invented at the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair, but this is probably just when they were introduced to the public. Evidence for the ice cream cone goes all the way back to 1807, of which there is a picture of someone eating something that looks more like a handheld ice cream concoction. The picture, or actually etching, I should say, is of the Café Frascati in Paris, second café we've men mentioned on this episode. Um, and jumping uh, maybe about 100 years into the future, there's also a patent for a machine uh, that made edible ice cream cups, and that was filed in 1903, a year before uh, the St. Louis World's Fair. And that was filed by uh, Italo Italo Marchiani. So it looks like there was more of an evolution of ice cream cones instead of a single pinpointed invention, just like ice cream. And you may have heard um, a piece at some point in your life of the semi-famous story about the invention of the ice cream sundae in 1881. Ooh, yes. So the story goes, a man named Edward Berners owned his own ice cream parlor in a town called Two Rivers, Wisconsin. One day in 1881... A certain George Hallier came into the parlor on a Sunday and ordered an ice cream soda. Such a thing was not only forbidden during this time, but actually illegal, as one of the restrictions under something called the, quote, Lou Laws, banned the consumption of ice cream sodas on Sundays because it was thought to be too splurgy 
to eat something so rich on the Sabbath. Now, the ice cream sodas uh, of the time typically consisted of ice cream, soda, and some type of chocolate sauce, which I find kind of weird. But, you know, things were different back then. And uh, because Ed Berners still wanted to fill an order uh, for, you know, for his uh, for an ice cream, but do- didn't want to break any laws, he simply scooped some ice cream into a dish and topped it off with some chocolate syrup. And as you can probably guess, uh, the creation was a hit. What a revolutionary concept. This is less innovational than the ice cream soda. I feel like we took a step back in the cutting edge technology of mankind when we created the ice cream sundae. Like, why why did it take us this long? You'd think the sundae would have come before the soda. Yeah, some things are just better in its simpler form. The soda seems more innovational than the sundae. I don't know. Whatever works, man. Whatever works. All right. So that's story number one. Story number two has its claim to fame in Ithaca, New York. Story number two occurs in 1892, 11 years after the first supposed story. I'll explain why the first story is supposed in a minute. Regardless, on a Sunday morning after church in 1892 in Ithaca, New York, Reverend John M. Scott stopped by the Platt and Colt Pharmacy for a sweet treat and a chat with the church treasurer and pharmacy co-owner, Chester Platt. Platt served up two bowls of vanilla ice cream, but added an extra twist with cherry syrup and a chocolate cherry on top. Uh, The creation was then named the Cherry Sundae. Now, the documentation on this historical event is excellent, and everyone can be 100% sure that it happened. However, if both stories are true, both the Two Rivers and the Ithaca story, then the Two Rivers, Wisconsin, takes the ice cream, or takes the takes the cake, takes the cream, I don't know, uh, on the uh, invention of the ice cream sundae. The only reason to believe that story number one might not be totally true is that the owner of Ed Burner's ice cream parlor, Ed Burner himself, was proved by death records to have been only 18 in 1891. Owning his own shop at 18 is impressive, but unlikely. I don't know. Give him the, you never know. You never know. Doubt. You never know. Yeah. So if someone, if somehow the first story happened to be only a story, then Ithaca, New York, is credited with the creation of the ice cream sundae. This has been a subject of great debate between these two towns over the years. And uh, side note, uh, something that needs to be mentioned is that the Y in sundae was changed to an E at some point in time. Uh, so as not to have a direct affiliation with the Sabbath. And this would make more sense uh, with the first story uh, because it was, you know, kind of more of a working around the rules as opposed to done by uh, the church treasurer. Uh, But anyway, but when exactly this uh, spelling change was made isn't really clear. Well, whether cup, cone, sundae, cake... Or however you enjoy ice cream, I think we can all agree that it is one of mankind's proudest in- innovations. So, go out there and celebrate National Ice Cream Day like you're supposed to, but remember, please celebrate responsibly. If you have any questions or comments about the information provided in this episode, please contact us at thehistoryof365 at gmail.com. Have a blessed day, and you've got to promise me something. Never Stop learning.